junk rig boat there. I'm just waiting for it to get light enough to go out and find somewhere to drop the hook and then I've got to wait. Well I'll sail around a bit, I'll have a look at the other side, over the other side, but on the ebb. I'll just watch the ebb, get the tide go, and then when the tide turns I'll go up with it, up the Humber. That's my plan. You can see this bar, it's just after high tide so it hasn't covered, but when it does cover it gets pretty rough in here. But it only covers at springs, so most of the time it's a really really good haven. Occasionally it just goes mad. Here are the forts. cracking little harbour. If you can take the ground then uh, Tetney Harbour is a, a lovely place to come. How, it's, it's sand, it's quite hard sand so getting the grip with your anchor is, is quite hard but uh, there are quite a few moorings here and they don't seem to object to you picking them up as long as your boat's not too big. I mean if you came in here with a Westerly 33 and put it on one of their moorings and they might be a bit upset but uh, most of the time you know they're all small boats so if you've got a small boat they're not going to bother plus you know once tide's out you're not going to go anywhere and you can nip overboard and dig your anchor in ready for the tide to come back so and it's lovely for swimming and s a bit of sailing you know if you've got a sailing dinghy or something beautiful walking on the sand around here some lovely walks nearest shop is quite a stretch. Mile maybe, it's not that bad is it, a mile. Southeast four or five, fair, goods, occasionally poor. Eric upon Tweeds to Whitby. Variable two or three, becoming southeast three or four. Fair, moderate or good. Whitby to Gibraltar Point. East or southeast three or four. Showers later, moderate or good. Gibraltar Point to North Foreland. Variable two or three, becoming easterly or northeasterly three or four. Showers, moderate or good. North Foreland to Selseyville. It's a beautiful day and the wind is almost dead behind. The tide is still ebbing, so further up the Humber it will be blasting out at five knots, but here it's not going that fast. I don't know, one and a half knots, one knot. So my, my plan is to find the six foot contour. There's a big sand bank here just in front of Grimsby and follow the six foot contour and if I sneak along this southerly shore um, by the time the river starts to narrow then the tide should have turned behind me. It's about eight o'clock in the morning and this says that I'm doing 1.2 knots, 1.9 knots. I'm still at three meters so I'm looking for six feet and I'll follow that. I was going to sit around and read a book but I might just as well sail gently. 
tomorrow it's going to bucket down with rain. The trouble is sometimes where it shallows it actually runs faster. But by and large, shallower is slower. You can see someone's been laying lobster pots along here or mud pot or crab pots. Going along at about one metre, you can see this sand, it's called Cleaness Sand, because this is Cleethorpes here, which is a holiday camp type place. There's Cleethorpes. The tide is probably running at about five knots, whereas here it's running at half a knot. So we're shifting along at two knots, which is pretty good. See, here's the chart. So I spent the night here, Tetney Harbour. Came out this morning, waited here for um, a couple of hours. I had an egg sandwich, and I'm now sneaking along this shore. I'm going to get forced out into the tide a bit, and then I can come back in again. Let's see if I can get up this bit here. But by the time I get to here, the tide will have turned. suddenly started kicking off, I don't know why. Sometimes two. Cleanness sand. It swings right out. <laughs> Which I guess is why I'm making good progress because there's, oh, there's not much tide here. again. This sandbank just curves right out back into the stream. So I guess when I come round the corner here I'm going to be up against it. I don't know, quarter past nine, so there's another hour and a half of tide to come. So there's not that much tide to come out. Yeah, 
clee sand is really showing itself now. About four feet of water. About there. The sounding pole is much more useful than the Echo sounder. Echo sounder is fine for kind of four or five feet, or if you're going along, you can see it shelving away. But at this level, you can see that it's actually quite lumpy out there. So you can go, be going along at four feet, and then within a bow's length, within a boat's length, it can be down to two feet shallow again. So I can get away without banging the rudder. Two point four knots. However, it's forcing me away from the shore now. That says 1.6 meters, and it's not 1.6 meters, it's a lot less than that. Ah, getting deeper again. Water's doing some pretty weird stuff here. I assume it's quite shallow, there's a spit comes out. It's really slopping through that little hole there. That's amazing. This little bit behind me, obviously the, the sands catches the uh, ebbing humber and has made a little channel through there. It is really punching through. It's amazing. I'm having a great time. I'm really, really enjoying just feeding along this, the edge of this clee sands. Clee nest sands. Bang. Okay. <laughs> I can see some slightly weird water ahead of me as well. I'm, I'm almost at the edge, the outer edge of it now. So uh, fairly soon I'll be able to turn back down the Humber. At the moment, um, it's forcing me right out into the stream, so I assume it will be running quite hard here, but you can see that it's coming to an end now. This is the outer limit of it at this stage of the tide. This would be a great place to duck punt on a day like today. Any moment now, I should be able to turn in a bit turn up river. <laughs> yeah, the river's really getting inside. It's going to push me sideways now.
nipping along the edge here. So now I've got to find this new edge. Now I've come around the corner. Uh, the speed has dropped to about a knot. The tide is starting to slop. You can see through here it gets pretty narrow, so it goes fast. So just coming past Groomsby Road, uh, it's running pretty fast. So I've got two metres underneath me. I could either just sit here, I could put on the engine and get past Grimsby, or I could just drop the hook and wait for the tide to turn. So I've come over to this North Shore now uh, to get away from the industrialisation on that side and also just it's quieter and there's a gentle mud bank here so I can get into the shallow water again. Don't think the tide has turned yet. Maybe it's not much of a channel. Wow, 5.6 knots. The tide must have turned. I 
I have uh, dropped the main. We were going along at 5.6 knots, which is, you know, there, it was going over hull speed, so the, there was more energy than the main could boat could soak up. So uh, I've just got the Genoa up. The tide's going to be underneath me in, in a minute anyway, so we'll, we'll be going along at 8 knots uh, with the Genoa up. It's now doing 4.5 knots. Doing 4.6 knots. Maybe with a bit of tide against me, but I'm so close to the edge here. One meter. The surface of the water, when the, when the wind is blowing this strong, the surface of the water is moving uh, with the wind as opposed to uh, with the tide. So this shallow bit, probably, still whizzing along here, that's fine. But you don't want to put more strain on the boat than the boat wants. On the ground, on a... <coughs> on a ground on a bar here. Any moment now I'll get off. Well I got off okay. Had to use the engine. Shame.
they call the Ancholm Channel. Yes. This is the bridge, and then I'm coming up here, and then Wintringham, Wintringham Haven is on this side. There's Bruff, so I'm going to the other side. Freaky. So I've come to the end of Reeds Island and somewhere along here is the entrance to Wintringham. place. 